Number 5. On the 30th of October 2021, an unnamed 30-year-old man and two of his friends were fishing at a lake in the municipality of Brasilândia de Minas in southern Brazil, about 600 miles from Rio de Janeiro. During the course of the day the three men were attacked by a swarm of bees after their boat hit a log and disrupted a beehive. With no other options, they jumped into the lake to try and escape the swarm. It is important to note that bees will not go away when you go into or underwater, they will simply wait for you to resurface. Their choice would however prove to be fatal for a completely unrelated reason. It would not take long for them to realize that the lake was filled with piranhas. Piranhas are carnivorous fish with triangular-shaped, razor-sharp teeth. Two of the three men were able to swim to safety. The 30-year-old man would not be so lucky. After he failed to make it to the shore, his friends called the fire department for help. His disfigured body would be found the next day, only four meters away from the shoreline. Parts of his body including his face, had been torn apart by the piranhas. It is however not clear if the man drowned before he was eaten. Although there are over 30 different species of piranhas. Attacks on humans are rare, but they can be fatal. There was a similar case in January of 2015. A six-year-old girl named Adrila Muniz, her grandmother, and four other children were on a vessel that capsized. All the children were saved, but Adrila would be found later after a large group of piranhas had fed on her. It was also unclear if she had drowned or not before the attack. Number 4. On the 4th of July 2019, 24-year-old Zafer Kuzu and two of his friends came up with an excellent plan to ensure that Zafer would not have to complete his court-ordered community service. Their plan worked a little too well. Zafer had been sentenced to do community service after he was convicted of causing injury in Erzurum, a northeastern Turkish city. The three men concluded that if Zafer was hospitalized he might not have to complete his community service. They decided that shooting Zafer with a shotgun would be the best way to get him hospitalized. They strapped two pillows to his back to deflate the shot. Kuzu then instructed one of his friends to shoot him. His unnamed 18-year-old friend then shot him, using buckshot rounds, at close range. After realizing their mistake Zafer's friends tried to rush him to a nearby hospital, but he would, unfortunately, die before they left the house. The 18-year-old also sustained injuries. He has been arrested, charged, and found guilty. He remains in custody. Number 3. Elena Struthers Gardner struggled with mobility difficulties. After a horse riding accident she had 39 years earlier, when she was only 21 years old. The accident had caused severe pain and multiple fractures to Elena's lumbar spine that then caused scoliosis. She was prone to falling over or collapsing at random intervals. On the 22nd of November 2018, Elena Struthers Gardner, then aged 60, was carrying a mason jar style drinking glass with a screw top lid and a 10 inch stainless steel straw when she collapsed at her home in Poole Dorset. Mandy, her wife of four years, did not hear the fall. But when she entered the kitchen, Elena was lying on her front and was making unusual gurgling noises. Mandy called 999 and while speaking to the operator she saw that the straw had gone through Alana's left eye. The 10-inch stainless steel straw had pierced Alana's left eye socket and her brain after the fall. Elena was rushed to Southampton General Hospital but died the following day due to a traumatic brain injury. The coroner would go on to warn. Rigid drinking aids should not be used with a lid that holds them in place. Number 2. We have all been eager to eat something we have just made in the oven, knowing all too well that it might still be too hot. Normally we put it in our mouths and exhale over it to try and cool it down or simply take the temporary discomfort and continue with our day. 51-year-old Darren Hickey would not be so lucky. Darren was a wedding planner from Horwich, England. While at a wedding on the 4th of April 2019, Darren was given a small fish cake to sample by one of the wedding venue chefs. He sampled the fish cake that was so hot it burnt the back of his throat. The pain grew worse during the course of the day, and Darren decided to go to the urgent care ward at Chorley Hospital, Lancashire. He would be sent home with only paracetamol painkillers and told to return if the pain got worse. Darren went home to rest, but his swelling continued to get worse, and later Neil Parkinson, his partner, found him choking. Neil called an ambulance. When the paramedics arrived they treated Darren, then rushed him to the Royal Bolton Hospital. He was however pronounced dead just after midnight, less than 12 hours after eating the fish cake. An inquest heard that Darren would have struggled to breathe and swallow due to the pain and swelling. 
Patrick Waugh, the pathologist who performed the post-mortem examination, said that the case was extremely rare and that usually the injuries Darren had would only be seen in people who had breathed in smoke during house fires, which burns the airway. According to the pathologist, a patient can appear normal and be talking, but then the swelling can start to worsen at any given time. It would also be found that the damage to Darren's throat was so far down, it could not have been seen without a specialist procedure. The practitioner at the hospital that treated Darren during his first visit had contacted a specialist from the ear, nose, and throat unit at Preston Hospital. The specialist was unable to find the damage due to the lack of burns to Darren's mouth and tongue. Darren's official cause of death was asphyxiation. Acting senior coroner Alan Walsh recorded Darren's cause of death as accidental. Number 1. In January 2018, Rajesh Meru was visiting his older sister Manisha's mother-in-law, Lakshmi Solanki, in the Nair Hospital, Mumbai. She was due for an MRI scan that day. An MRI scan also known as a magnetic resonance imaging scan is a type of scan that uses strong magnetic fields and radio waves to produce detailed images of the inside of the person's body. In essence, an MRI scanner is a large tube with extremely powerful magnets inside. Laxmi's daughter and son were to assist her into the MRI room. But Laxmi's son Tripuvan could not get his ring off of his finger, and since no jewelry was allowed in the MRI room, Rajesh volunteered to go instead of Tripuvan. Rajesh was standing outside of the MRI room when the door was opened without warning. The ward boy, Vidalchavan, asked him to move an oxygen tank almost half his height into the room since Laxmi required ventilator support. When the family asked if the oxygen tank was allowed in the MRI room since they had to leave all their purses, belts, and jewelry outside. Vidal, the ward boy claimed that the MRI machine was switched off and that there was no danger. The attending doctor also did not protest. According to witnesses as soon as Rajesh entered the room he vanished. Once his brother-in-law made his way and he was shocked. Rajesh had been pulled in by the magnetic field of the MRI scanner and his hand was pinned by the oxygen tank. Witnesses say that the nozzle of the cylinder had broken open and that Meru was inhaling the liquid oxygen coming from the tank through his mouth and nose. Within 15 seconds his body had bloated and turned black. Meru was pulled away from the MRI scanner by his family and the ward boy, they rushed him to the emergency ward, but he was already dead. The post-mortem revealed that Meru died of pneumothorax, a condition where excess air in the chest cavity causes the lungs to collapse due to exposure to high levels of oxygen. The standard operating protocol mandates that a ward boy, technician, and doctor of the radiology department monitor every MRI test. In this case, however ward boy Vidalchavan and Dr. Saurabh Landrikar were both from the medicine unit. Only a class 4 helper and technician present were from the radiology department. Dr. Saurabh Landrikar, ward boy Vidalchavan and attendant Sunida Serve have been charged with negligence and granted bail on a surety of RS 5000. The Maharashtra state government compensated Meru's family 500,000 rupees or 6700 dollars.